Hello and welcome to Bites Bread and Barbecue. I'm Ross Contino. Today we're going to be doing a quick install of the latest version of Manjaro Linux um, as of this date, July 25th, 2023. Uh, I normally run on Linux. As you can see from my desktop, I'm running a Linux Mint, slightly modified with a dock at the bottom, and I've moved the information bar to the top. That kind of gives it a uh, Macintosh feel or an Apple feel uh, and I do use this 99.9% .9 of the time as my daily driver. Um, now I've always worked within the uh, Ubuntu style family of Linux, uh, either Ubuntu, Kubuntu, or Linux Mint. Uh, Linux Mint is my favorite right now and I happen to be running that. Um, but I had heard that Manjaro runs on top of Arch and according to the different Linux forums all the cool kids are using Arch these days. So I wanted to take a peek at that and see what was different about that. I knew that it, Arch is a rolling release and that it also uses Pac-Man instead of APT for its software. And I wanted to do a virtual install of a machine with Manjaro on it um, and see what was a little bit different and if I like that feel or look at all. I'm probably going to continue to use what I have because it's completely set up, but I wanted to take a look and just see if I was missing out on something. So let's take a little look at what's going on. Here we're going to begin with a little video that goes through the download process for Manjaro. You first select your architecture, whether you have an x86 or something else. And then you'll notice that you can download this with a lot of different launchers. You can get KDE, GNOME, XFCE. You can get, even get Cinnamon if you want it to look like Linux Mint. But all the different uh, varieties are available. I happen to download the uh, KDE version of this. You can see the ISO sitting here on my hard drive. And um, what we did is we went to the virtual box and um, I put the ISO into the uh, part of the um, hard drive awareness for this virtual machine and it boots from the installation diskette. And if you've ever installed Linux before, this is something that's sort of typical. Now they do give you the option to boot with open source drivers or proprietary drivers, which is neat. You can also set your keyboard and your time zone right from the install screen. And essentially this is working the same as if you would be booting an entire operating system from a flash drive. It's going to come up right now, and it's going to show you um, that we have the Manjaro desktop, um, and it's going to give you the option to install to a hard drive. I have created a virtual machine with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 20 gigabytes of hard drive space, although apparently Manjaro needs a lot less than that. It would have fit within 10 gigs. Linux Mint on a virtual machine requires that at least 16 gigs on the hard drive. So it, and KDE is also lighter weight than GNOME, so that also could be a contributing factor. My understanding is that it is not as lightweight as XFCE, but I don't know exactly if that is true or exactly how much lighter weight it actually is. But KDE is a nice interface. So here, the first screen comes up with a bunch of different information and also has a button if you wanted to install, but I wanted to show that it does come up with a typical Linux desktop with an icon for installation in the upper left hand corner. Normally this would appear on most versions as a CD-ROM, but here we have a nice little square icon and it takes us into the installation process to put this on our virtual hard drive. It is detected that I am probably going to want American English and that I'm in New York with a US keyboard and it's already started going through all of this. You type in your name and your password that you're going to create for your account. Now it does have an option to check a box to make this password also the password for the administrator account or you can actually enter a separate password for the administrator account. I've never seen that in installation before. It's pretty slick. All right, we're going to go to the next screen. It also allows you to choose your Office suite. Now, I'm familiar with LibreOffice, so I picked that. And we're going to go ahead and install this onto the virtual hard drive. And now I've increased the speed of this installation about 800%, literally 800%. So what took a little bit over five minutes on my virtual machine is going to take just a few, a minute or so here. Uh, I did this so that you guys wouldn't have to wait. You can see that it gives you a set of information as it goes flying by during the installation. 
This actually worked very, very smoothly for me. And once it's complete with the installation, it's going to tell you, just like most Linux versions, that you need to restart the machine. Now the one thing that I did notice was, on the virtual machine, I did have to eject the installation disk uh, beforehand, otherwise it tried to go back to the installation server. So here we are in our newly installed machine, and the first thing we do is check for updates. There's always updates when you do a fresh install. Um, and again, I'm, this is through the Pac-Man service, I assume, since this doesn't have APT. Um, and it's going to go ahead and I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to wait for it. It gives you a text description of exactly what's going on. And in most of my Ubuntu-based renditions, you have the option to expand for details, but usually it just gives you an installation bar to tell you how far you're going on. This is actually telling you in the text screen a little bit about what is happening. And again, I'm running at 800% here because this dis it always takes a while with the first update uh, to get you up to the current running system. So that happens in any version of Linux. And you can see underneath that this does look like the standard, we have to restart, standard uh, KDE desktop. So here we're gonna restart the machine. And I did kind of allow this to come on here live time just so you could see on a virtual machine with these given resources, what exactly it would be um, using uh, as I booted this up. So we're going to come into the Manjaro screen, it loads, and you can see that it says in the lower right hand corner, made by Plasma, it just means you're running KDE. And uh, at this point it was actually running maximized as a window on my uh, system, because you can still see my Linux Mint Clank at the bottom, but um, it, um, it is still running full screen without any distortion. The first window looks a little different. Instead of an install button at the bottom, it's got an application button. And if you click that, it's kind of interesting. And I guess this is part of Pac-Man too. It's giving you drop-down menus where you can see what is installed and anything else you might want to install by checking the boxes on the right. I have not seen anything like this on an Ubuntu-based system before. I thought it was pretty cool that you could just go to a section you wanted and you could click that box and it would go ahead and install it. It's pretty interesting, pretty neat. And you can walk through, you know, videos, movies, whatever you want to install here. It would give you the ability to do that. Um, and you can see that I was just going down through to see what was here. Um, and um, last but not least, it does install time shift for your backups. If we go to the button at the bottom left-hand corner, this is very stereotypical KDE. It's classic KDE. All of your applications are separated by their categories and it tells you exactly what has been installed onto this machine in a very clean way of looking at this, this machine. Um, <clears throat> down through your system information, your utilities. Um, if we look over um, to the, the uh, terminal here, it actually comes up with console, and that's what KDE uses, that's their version. The NeoFetch shows us that we are running kernel 6.1, I have not run that kernel before. I've, uh, all of my long-term supports have been running some version of 5, but this is a 6.1 version of the Linux kernel, which is the latest one. If we bring Firefox up, it does show us that um, uh, Firefox is coming up with the latest version for the very first setup. And this is very typical of Firefox. It does this on any type of machine or operating system that you're using. We'll skip through this, and I'll see if I can take it to my website on YouTube. Um, we'll pull one of my YouTube videos just to see resolution and speed. And now try to remember this is a virtual machine with limited RAM um, and it does make a difference. So it did seem to bring it up uh, fairly quickly. Uh, I thought that YouTube popped up very quickly. And if we go to my my website here, my bike bread, bites bread and barbecue, um, and we pick one of my videos, Pages are loading pretty quickly, and I won't make you suffer through this whole video. Um, but this is where I had taken a Kindle Fire and uh, loaded it with an Android operating system, a launcher. Um, and you can see at the time I made this, I was running Linux Ubuntu uh, Jamming Jellyfish 22.04 LTS. Uh, the screen uh, background will tell you that. Um, 
So I thought the resolution looked a little bit fuzzy in full screen mode here. That's probably a virtue of, a, of it being a virtual machine. And fast forwarding through the video seemed to be a little bit sluggish to me. Um, but again, virtual machine. Uh, if you minimize the video, I thought the picture looked sharper and the speed was a lot better. So let's just go to, um, uh, say we go back to a, just a plain old Google page, and this is a new install, so it's never been cached before. You type in Google and boom, it loads Google right away. So I thought that was pretty fast. Uh, if we go to the software store, it looks very familiar to anybody who has used GNOME, uh, or uh, KDE software store in the past. However, this is based on uh, Pac-Man. Um, whereas my Linux Mint uses APT and Flatpak, uh, this does use Pac-Man. And it, you can page through each type and look for any type of software um, that you want to install. And this has installed the uh, very typical software for KDE environment. Lower right hand corner, desktop icon, multiple desktops, Plasma integration for your browser if you want. We've already done our updates, sound controls, um, last used uh, device, uh, your network connection, whether it's Wi-Fi or hardwired, and then there are hidden icons. I thought I would try to pull up the kernel from the Manjaro settings here. I tried left clicking, that doesn't work. You have to right click, I should have known better. And it'll pull up a little menu and I select the kernels. And once again from here, you're gonna see that up to a kernel of 6.5 if you're a daring soul for experimental you could try it but presently um, it's it's running on 6.1 and you could see that 5.15 was like the last version of 5 and is what my Linux Mint is currently running so we're going to shut down that machine and off it goes now the one thing that I did want to show in VirtualBox that I neglected to do when I was making that first video. If you can bear with me here just to log on to the Manjaro version once again, and we're coming back into that same one that had a little bit of that video for the installation process. I wanted to demonstrate that Wayland is available for um, Linux Manjaro. Now there are two current systems to display your, uh, your GUI interface, um, GUI, graphical user interface, your GUI, um, on Linux, that's X11 and Wayland. Um, Wayland is supposed to be the wave of the future and X11 is the old system. Um, however, for whatever reason, my system, which is very good hardware, does not play well with Wayland. And I don't know what I'm gonna do about that moving forward because it is the coming thing. So this is actually X11 um, that it installed onto my system here with this virtual drive. But if we actually log out, you can see from a login screen that um, in the lower left-hand corner, at boot, you can select um, Wayland as your uh, Plasma operating graphics system or Plasma. Um, so, or, or, I'm sorry, X11. Um, I tried the Wayland on the virtual machine, I get black screen. It shows nothing with Plasma. I get the results that I typically would expect, um, and it takes me right back into Manjaro uh, with a nice, clean picture um, into the machine um, with the background that installed, and everything works for me. Um, I do have the X11 running on my Linux Mint as well when I have tried Waylon on Ubuntu or Kunbuntu in the past, uh, whenever it works when I boot up my machine, but whenever my machine goes into suspend mode um, for power saving, um, it absolutely takes the entire graphics to snow. And you can't wake up the machine. All you have is all sorts of different colored snow on um, restart of the machine. So, that was my take on um, Manjaro Linux. I thought it was interesting, and I thought it'd be interesting to play with a system that's running Arch underneath, um, just to take a look at it. For now, I'm gonna stick with my Linux Mint um, and the various things that I can do with that. So, thanks a lot. Uh, if you like this video, please click subscribe at the bottom. 
um, or give us a thumbs up. Those things help me with YouTube, and I would appreciate it very much. Have a good day.